It's uh, Jesse and JD here with iHeartRadio talking to Ryan of Mother Mother. And it's a big day for you guys, Ryan. You got uh, Halo 2 has uh, been released finally. Inside Deluxe is now out. You know, m- my first question, I think, you know, with everything that's going on in the world where everything is so uncertain, especially in the music world, bands announcing tours, canceling tours, postponing shows. You know, one thing you guys do have control over right now is putting out new music and you guys have just done that how good does it feel to finally put out something new from the band it feels great and you know we didn't think we'd put out music so soon because we just put a record out in june but the thing about music is it comes along presents itself and you write it and you get excited about it and you just have to put it out and it we live in a day and age where the album cycle doesn't rule anymore you can release and distribute and share every day if you want to, being that the the modern internet channels are so wide open and free. So it's it's an exciting time to create and to release music. And and with Hayloft, you know, the original, a big hit for you guys, obviously c- coming out a long time ago, what was the inspiration to, to do a follow-up to that? Like you write a song, you tell a story, and then you go back after all these years and go, wait, there's more to that song. We, we got to finish it. Why did you guys decide to do that? It was fairly organic. So with this deluxe package, we wanted to certainly go back to our roots a bit and make some new songs in the old vein. And one of the things that was said was we should do another Hayloft you know, quote unquote, not literally, just another song that had that fire. And at a certain point, it was like, well, why don't we actually do another Hayloft? What would that be like? And at first, it just felt like a cool songwriting exercise to write a sequel, to extrapolate on this ancient story. And that's something I had never done as a songwriter. So it was more just out of curiosity, like, can that be done? And can, can it feel authentic? And can it be great? And the idea emerged and it felt inspired and energized. And so at that point, it was like, okay, let's let's um, catch the temperature of the fans because do they even want this story to um, extrapolate? You know, maybe it is complete unto itself. And so at that point, I made a post on TikTok and Instagram sharing the nugget of the idea, kind of just saying, hey, is this a good idea? And um, you know, the approval rating was was high, you know, the 99.9%. Yeah, do it. Go for it. And so at that point, it's like, okay, it's on. Let's make this happen. Now, Ryan, you guys put a lot of stock into how your band appears online. You guys are on TikTok. You're very active on social media. And it, it seems that you guys care about music videos, which a lot of bands don't. Uh, you guys hired, you know, Juno Award winner Emma Higgins to do the recreation of Hayloft 1. And now you've got her doing Hayloft 2. You know, how important is it to Mother Mother that you guys have cool visuals to tell the story of your songs? Well, yeah, you always want to make everything awesome. I think art and music, the bar is so high. Like, there's no threshold to greatness. And so you're always pushing yourself to be better. Um, and when it comes to our fans, it really is an exchange. It's a community. It's a family. It's symbiotic. We need them. How much do they invest in us? I mean, they spend their precious time digging through our catalog, I think that deserves reciprocity on our end to just try to make the whole world as enticing and engaging, aesthetically, musically appealing as possible. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's just more fun when you pour your heart and soul into every facet of your music. So Ryan, inside Deluxe, I wanted to ask you about the Deluxe edition of this album, because, you know, way too often, it seems we get a Deluxe edition of an album and it's like, an extra b-side and like a live song or something like that dude it's just kind of thrown in you've got a bunch of new recordings on here like seven brand new recordings is this you know for, for lack of a better analogy is this like the director's cut of a movie you know the way you intended it to be seen or is this just new stuff that you thought you know what that would slot in really well here and, and just adding a little bit more to a pre-existing work for the band. yeah i mean the original concept would, would was that it would be a typical three track deluxe extension but the muse was speaking and songs kept coming and we're like, no, this needs to go on now. Now this need, what are we going to cut? It can't be too many songs. And then it was like, it can be too many songs. That's the beautiful thing about right now, 2022 making music. It can be whatever you want it to be. So yeah, it's basically another EP. Um, and the music just directed that. 
or to ask you about, you know, the last the last few years and what a roller coaster it's been. You know, we, we've dealt with in Calgary, um, like many markets across Canada, you know, like a litany of of cancellations, postponements, you know, getting excited and then having to like temper that expectation. And it's been tricky for the fans. But what's it like, you know, being on the performer side of it? You know, the one sharing is his art and, and wanting to be out there, you know, playing shows. So what's that been like for you? I guess you ask yourself what you can do, what you can't do, and then you put your energy where it's most fruitful. And so if you can't tour, then you create and you share in other ways. And being that times are so modern and exciting technologically, sharing has been opened up in a pretty big way. So I think for us this time, this pandemic era has been an opportunity to triple down on our skill set with social media, with the creative process, with recording, with sharing, with galvanizing a relationship with our fans, and trusting that when the world opens up, it'll be time to again make that human connection in a room at a venue. But there's never nothing to do. There's always so much to do. A decent case of you know the, like making the heart grow fonder too. That distance, right? Like you talk about strengthening that bond with your fan base. You know, the people that love consuming what Mother Mother does. Like, how sweet is it going to be to be able to get back up on a stage and do it, you know, full out for real the way we used to do it? Like, it, in theory, it just makes that sweeter, right? Absolutely. And I think that will be even more sweeter because you've been nurturing the relationship from afar. It's kind of like a good friend on the other side of the world and you don't see each other for two years. There's a big difference when you reunite if you didn't speak for those two years or you've been sending letters and checking in and nurturing the relationship, that reunion is much more glorious, much more intimate and familiar. And so we feel like returning to our fans in a room will be all the more exciting and celebratory because we've been nurturing the bond from afar online. And, and Ryan, I got a question because, you know, when we're in this era that we're in right now with music and, and like J.D. mentioned, all the post moments of shows and cancellations of tours, when you hear like a Pearl Jam of Foo Fighters or Raging Against the Machine and they put off a show, you know, we know those guys are fine. They live in their mansions. They've got 12 cars. They're all good. When, when you got, you know, bands that are, you know, relying on touring and getting out there and seeing their fans, you know, just to get by. And I know you're in a community with a whole bunch of great Canadian musicians. What's it been like for, for some bands that, that you might be around or that you've toured with just getting by without that touring? I, I've seen some guys in big name bands that we play on the radio all the time that have had to grab jobs outside of the music industry, doing construction, doing labor, working at stores, you know, just to get by. What has it been like, you know, as a whole, and I know you can't speak for everybody, but for the music community, for those bands that aren't the big ones, just trying to make it through this pandemic to get back out there to see their fans? Probably really hard to devastating, I would imagine. I actually haven't been in close contact or conversations with bands monitoring their um, existence through this. But, you know, you see online pledges to be made to save venues, to save careers, to save the arts during this time. And yeah, I think it's real. I think that the, the struggle is real. Ryan, we, uh, we just wanted to say thanks for your time today, you know, and congratulations on, on not only a sequel to Hayloft, but, you know, a deluxe edition of Inside and, and just getting more more mother mother in our lives and in our ear holes. That's always a good thing. <laughs> Thank Wait you so much. Day. Appreciate it.